when he had heard the crowd going by, he asked, what was happening? They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want, us to, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for this time that you've given us to share a word today. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you would just take charge of me and use me to your glory. Speak to my heart as I speak to your people. And we just praise you and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We like to use for a thought this morning, now I see. In the text, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And the scripture tells us as he's on his way, he passes through Jericho. Notice that in verse 35, it says, as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. Now, it's interesting that this, this man, it doesn't tell us whether he was blind from birth. It uh, doesn't tell us a whole lot how he uh, got in this condition. But we do know that this man was begging, and perhaps this was a normal thing for him to do because this was the only way that he could get the support that he needed. He had to sit by the road and beg. You have to know that in those times, they didn't have welfare. They didn't have social programs. And typically, when the outcasts, the people who, who could not take care of themselves, had to resort to begging. Now, also at the same time, this was a good place for him to do that because the city of Jericho catered to people who had money, to the wealthy. And Jericho, the road, the Jericho road, I call it, on the way to Jerusalem, many people passed that way. So this was, this was a good spot uh, for him to beg uh, to support himself. So the scripture says that as Jesus was passing by uh, and the blind man sitting by the road begging, if you could picture this, this picture, and I, and I also believe that he wasn't, he wasn't the only person that was there begging. As I said before, this was a, this was a, a prime spot uh, for, for, for beggars to be, to be because a lot of people pass that way. And so you'll see here in the text that in verse 36 it says, when the blind man heard the crowd going by, uh, he asked, what's happening? Uh, now, Jesus was, had his disciples with him. Uh, there was, uh, the scripture tells us that there was a crowd of people passing by on the road. And based on the time, probably a lot of the people were pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem for the Passover. So you can imagine in your mind that there was a lot of people passing by and there was a crowd. The blind, the man could not see. All he could do was hear all of these folks passing by. So that's, that's what led him to ask the question. He says, well, what's, what is all this, this commotion? What is all this noise? What's, what's happening? And they told him, said, well, Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. Now, 
in his mind, he couldn't, he couldn't see Jesus. But in his mind, he knew something about this Jesus of Nazareth. Now, you know, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but he grew up in Nazareth. And so that's the reason why I believe he said they told him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So, 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 and, and, and from the text, I can see that he couldn't see Jesus with his physical eyes. But when they told him that Jesus was Nazareth was passing by, notice what happened. He cried out, Jesus, son of David. Now, you have to keep in your mind that, that, that Jesus uh, had healed the sick. He, 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 had, he had done a lot of miracles. And, and he had become popular. And, and, and a lot of times where Jesus went, if they knew who he was, crowds would gather. Because this man had done some miraculous things. Uh, Matter of fact, Nicodemus came to him by night and said, How, this, this man must be of God because of the things he's able to do. You know, he, he, he healed other blind people. He, he caused people who couldn't hear uh, to, uh, to, to, to be able to hear. Uh, people who couldn't walk, uh, those who were lame, Jesus gave them the ability back to walk. And so he, his popularity, it goes before him, and so crowds would gather, and so I believe that the blind man had heard about Jesus. So when they told him, the reason why you hear all this noise, the reason why this crowd is here, a lot of it is because there's these folks that's following Jesus of Nazareth and recognizing who he was because he had, of what he heard. Not only that he recognized it because of what he heard, he couldn't see with his eyes, but he could see with his heart. That's the reason why he called out. He says, notice in the text, he says, uh, the blind man said, he called out. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, what we notice here is, is that this blind man believed in his heart that Jesus could heal him. And, it, and, and, and notice that he says, son of David, this blind man believed that this was the Messiah because that term, son of David, is a messianic term. And he believed that this was the one who was promised, the coming Messiah. A lot of other folks should have been calling him the son of David because he is the Messiah. But the blind man spoke out. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Chances are a lot of folks didn't want him to be saying that. Because even some of his, even his disciples didn't really know who he was. And a lot of the folk who was following him, they didn't really know who he was either. A lot of them was following him because of the miracles that he could do. But this blind man knew that this, this, this he, he is the one. He is the son of David, the descendant who will come from David, who will establish his throne forever. He believed this. That's why he cried out. Son of David. And not only that, notice that in the text, the, the people try to, shh, 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 you need, don't do that. Maybe they told him to hush because he was causing a commotion. Or maybe it is that they, they tried to get him to hush because they didn't want him to be saying that. But that didn't stop him. Notice what the text says. He says, those who led, the text says, those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But notice that it says in the text, that he shouted out all the more. He shouted out. He said it again. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. Because one of the things that you have to understand is that we're going to see like we ought to see, then we need to be able to open up the eyes of our heart. That's where the blind man was. He, he was seeing with his heart. He, he couldn't see with his eyes, but he was seeing with his heart. So he cried out. He with his knee, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, one of the things that I know is, is that uh, I was reading this book, and in this book, the author is R. Kent Hughes, and one of the things he says in his book is, is this. He says there's only one thing worse than blindness, and that is not knowing that you are blind. Multitudes of blind 
are blind to darkness, blind to their sin, blind to their destiny, blind to their hopelessness, spiritually out of touch. There's a whole lot of folk who are walking around every day with their physical eyes wide open. But yet at the same, at the same time, they are spiritually blind. He also goes on to say uh, that someone was once asked Helen Keller. Let me tell you who Helen Keller was. Helen Keller uh, was born in 1880. And, and, and two years later, in 1882, she lost her, her eyesight and her hearing. A little bit more about Helen Keller. Helen Keller went on to college. Uh, matter of fact, she, she wrote a book, some books. And uh, also at the same time, she was the first person uh, to be deaf and blind to, to, to graduate uh, uh, cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts degree. She couldn't see and she couldn't hear. She was an advocate of people with disabilities. So someone, in our Kent's book, he, he writes that someone asked her this question. Isn't it terrible to be blind? Here is her reply, and I'll quote. She said, better to be blind and see with your heart than to have two good eyes and see nothing. What can we learn then from this, 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 this man who was blind with his physical eyes, but was able to see spiritually with his heart? In other words, I'm talking about spiritual vision. Better to see with spiritual vision, even if you can't see with your eyes. A lot of us, a lot of folks are walking around in spiritual darkness. We ought to be, want to, we ought to be able to want to come to the position of being able to say, now I see. So what can we, so what can we learn from from, from from this experience, the blind man could not be hushed because he recognized that he had a need. So one of the first steps to, to spiritual eyesight is the first that we have to recognize that we can't see spiritually. So we must, we must see our need. So, so, so here's some questions for you to ponder in your mind. Are, are, are you blind to your sin? Only you can answer that question. Uh, are you blind to your need for Christ? Or perhaps, or perhaps you are a Christian, but your sin has cauterized, uh, or has caused you to have scales on your eyes. And you can't tell what Christ is, is really saying to you because you're not seeing with your heart. Brothers and sisters and friends, we need to ask, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to open up our eyes so that we can, so, so that we can see what God wants us to see. So that we can see what kind of condition that we're in. So that we can see uh, the darkness that may be in us so that the light will shine brightly and Jesus Christ can call you out of that darkness into his marvelous light. The blind man couldn't see physically, but because he was able to see spiritually, he didn't miss Jesus passing by. A lot of us, a lot of us are missing Jesus passing by. Passing by in our lives because we refuse or we have no desire to see spiritually. God wants to open up our eyes and sometimes he will allow circumstances to come into your life 
to cause you to have a pause, to get your mind together, to realize that the only way that you can really see is to have Jesus Christ in your life. And until that happens, we stumble around in darkness and we have no spiritual eyesight. So in order for, for, in order for me to find my sight, I must surrender myself and call on Jesus. Once you see your need, that is key. Then you need to see who Jesus really is. Who is this Jesus? He is. The Bible refers to him sometimes as the son of man. We already know that Jesus is God. We know that Jesus is the son of God. The Bible says, says that every knee will bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is the one who will come and, 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 and the throne of David will be, be established forever through the lineage of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why the blind beggar called out two times, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me. Because he recognized that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. We need to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Notice what happened in the text. Jesus did not for one time tell him to be quiet. Notice what happens uh, in the text. After the blind man had cried out and Pope, folks tried to get him to be quiet, notice what happened. Jesus stopped and ordered the man uh, to be brought to him. Also notice that two of the other Gospels also have this account. Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Mark, they have this same account in those Gospels. Now, those men told the story a little bit differently. Matter of fact, in the, book of, in the book of Mark, the scripture says Jesus called him, said, go, go get him, bring him to me. The scripture also says that when, when Jesus said that, the blind man threw off his cloak and jumped to his feet and went to Jesus. He did not hesitate, brothers and sisters. Need us not hesitate to go to Jesus. Because when you call on the name of Jesus, something will happen. He threw off his cloak. More than likely, he used his cloak to gather the, the, the arms or the, whatever the people would throw on, on his cloak while he was begging. But, he, but he, he tossed all that aside to go to Jesus. Notice what happened in the text. The text says that Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. Notice what happens when he, the scripture says, when he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? That's a great question. Jesus is, Jesus is waiting for all of us to answer that question. What is it, Jesus, that you, Jesus is asking us, what do you want me to do for you? Notice what the blind man says. He says, Lord, I want to see. He replied. The text says, Jesus said to him, receive your sight. That must have been music to the blind man's ears. Now, remember, now he can't see. But Jesus said to him, based on his request, he said, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. In other words, Brothers and sisters, he's saying that his faith by itself was what not healed him. But because he had faith in the one who could heal him, he received his sight. He goes on to say, the scripture says, and immediately he received his sight. And what did he do? The Bible says that he followed Jesus, praising God. Now, he was a blind man who, because of his ability to see spiritually, 
led him to be able to be healed physically. We need to cry out. Can we see like we ought to see? Are we seeing as we should see? It's not about how well we see with our physical eyes, but what it really is about is how we see with our hearts. Remember what Helen Keller said when she was asked the question, isn't it terrible to be blind? Her reply to which she responded, better to be blind and see with your heart than to have two good eyes and see nothing. We need to cry out. The Bible says that when we call on the name of Jesus, we'll be saved. How can we call on him unless we believe in him? Jesus, son of God, we ought to be saying, have mercy on me. You know, mercy is not getting what we deserve. The blind man realized this. This was spiritual eyesight for him. We should cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Seeing our need, who really, who, 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 who Jesus is really. Cry out in faith, have mercy on me. So here's, a, here's, here's some questions for us. Do you see yourself? How do you line up? Take a, take, take a moment to, to, to look within yourself and ask, how, what, do, how do you see yourself? How do you, how do you line up? Do you see Jesus for who he is? Have you called out to him? Jesus, son of David, have mercy uh, on me. Is he, is, is he asking you? What do you want me to do for you? So many folks are spiritually out of touch. Doesn't matter whether you go to church every Sunday. What matters is, do you see Jesus for who he really is? He is the son of God. He is God. And he will establish David's throne forever because he is the Messiah. The blind man saw this. So if you really want to see spiritually, if you really want your eyes to be open, you want to see with the ability to see with your heart, first of all, we must invite Jesus into our hearts and believe in our hearts that he is the Christ. I don't, I don't care what kind of problems you have, but one thing for sure, we need to ask our questions, how to ask the question, how, what do I see in myself? Has the light been turned on in your life? Can you see like you ought to see? There's a lot of folk that are walking around in darkness, don't know which way to turn, and the only way to turn is to turn to Christ. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for Jesus, who is the light of the world. We pray for, for anyone who's listening today that, 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 that ask that question, do I see myself? Am I seeing spiritually, even though my eyes are wide open physically? Help me to see spiritually. We pray, oh God, for anyone that's on this call that don't know Jesus, that you would open up their eyes and that they would call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word, and may you hide your word in our hearts and open up our eyes that we might see the way we ought to see. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining in. Until next time.